My code is on the Steam Deck and it's actually easy enough to do it so that you can also try to make your code to the Steam Deck if you know anything about coding. I didn't when I started. So you probably know the Steam Deck and you probably know that you can enable this desktop mode. Let me show you through a video of gaming on Linux. This desktop mode that actually boots up a desktop that's called KD Plasma. And the cool thing about KD Plasma, which is this desktop here and of course, this desktop here that I'm using is that it's a desktop completely made through like volunteers or developers by pay, paid by third party companies and actually anybody can work on it. So even if you're not like employed by the KD Plasma um, EV, you can still look at the code, contribute to it, make merge requests. And it's very easy to actually make a change in KD Plasma. And of course, if you do, that code also gets everywhere that KD Plasma is used including the Steam Deck, which is rather cool because now since I've contributed to KD Plasma, my code is on the Steam Deck. Let me actually explain what kinds of my code is on the Steam Deck. So this is a video by Linux for everyone and it shows something pretty cool, which is that the start menu is blurred behind it. And you can also see it on my machine, there's blur behind the menu. Now, it's actually not that easy to make blur behind menus. And there are two different effects behind menus to achieve that. The first one is the actual blur, which is the normal one you would expect. But it's not just that, there's also a contrast effect, uh, which changes the color, the intensity, the saturation, and the contrast of what's behind the element to make sure that the blur is actually noticeable. And I spent hours and hours and days and months actually to get to the very best values for blur and the contrast effect. And in fact, I was so obsessed with it that I've done my own vid website, sorry, with all of the toggles to quickly test without having to change the code at all. So I could see what impact all of the value they did when changed through a variety of backgrounds. And eventually I found the one that I'd like. I set those values in the default KD Plasma theme. And those are the values that everyone using the Steam Deck receive. So that's pretty cool. What else? This is a video by the Linux experiment. And what they show here is pretty important. You can see that there is the panel, which is you don't quite see it because it's a black background, but it's actually transparent. And you've got Dolphin and what? Nick is doing now, he's maximizing Dolphin. Now, look carefully at the panel. You can see that, the, let me show you again. So you can see that by maximizing the window, the panel went from being transparent to completely opaque, and that's adaptive transparency. Let me show it again here. I've got my panel, and if I maximize Dolphin, it becomes opaque and then transparent again when I demaximize it. So this idea of having a panel that's only transparent when there's nothing maximized is adaptive transparency. It's actually customizable. If you don't like it, you can turn it off by selecting either always opaque or always translucent. And it was mostly implemented by me with some L because I'm not that good with code, <laughs> but it was one of my very first big contributions. What else? So actually all applets in KD Plasma have this bar on the top and this bar on the bottom. You can see it better here. There is this bar on the top and one at the bottom. If I open some more widgets, you can see it, see it at the top. So that is called a plasmoid heading. And when I first came to KD Plasma, it wasn't there. And to my opinion, it looked kind of ugly without it. So I actually went there, we did a design with various mockups and I implemented it and it's the quite the same concept if you have an application to the top area of the application with all of the buttons, you have the same thing actually built in into applets. And that was also something that I implemented and that you can see in all videos actually featuring KD Plasma on, on the Steam Deck. Another thing is that if you go and actually customize the panel, because you can do that, you just right click and go into edit mode. And I can only show you this on my actual machine because no videos about the Steam Deck, Steam Deck actually feature this. There is this applet here, which is called a margin separator. And what this does is make, make sure that all applets to the left are slightly bigger than the applets on the right, which might seem like um, not quite necessary, but it actually is because if all applets were the same size in the panels by default, 
it would look weird. Even if you open up like Windows 11 or 10, I guess, you can see, sorry, 10, not 11. You can see that the icons on the left of the taskbar are actually bigger of that compared to the icons to the right of the taskbar. So I did that. And generally speaking, I, wo I work a lot with the panel and I make sure that it works and that it looks good in theory at least. And as an example, recently I've done a completely rewrite of the code of the panel. And also I'm working currently to implement floating panels so that it looks like this, like this. And of course, if I finish this up and then I ship it on KD Plasma by default, and then the Steam Deck actually updates its version of the KD Plasma, it will start using the floating panel as well. And that's pretty cool because I now know that if you give me like any Steam Deck for five minutes, I can just open up the right file and my name is going to be that in that file because I'm in the copyrights section. So that sounds cool, isn't it? So let's say that you also want to flex with your friends and making sure make sure that your name is on the Steam Deck too. Then you go to kd.org and you go into the get involved page and there's actually many, many ways to get involved. What I personally choose is both development and a little bit of help also in the promotion community. But of course, if you want your name on the Steam Deck, you kind of have to do a bit of development and it's actually rather easy to do this. Now, obviously, if you're using KD Plasma already, then it's slightly easier because you know how it works and everything. But if you do not use KD Plasma, well, uh, what about you give it a try? Because uh, yes, it's on the Steam Deck, but it can, it can run on any computer actually. So you don't need to wait for a Steam Deck to actually have a Steam Deck to try out the Steam Deck desktop and use it on your desktop or laptop. If you don't know how to do that, you just go to kd.org and click or on install on your computer. And there are instructions for various distributions you can choose from, etc., etc. So now that you do have KD Plasma installed, if you want to try it out, by the way, you don't have to like wipe up your current uh, operating system. You can just install it alongside or even just in a virtual manager. You follow this nice tutorial, which tells you how to install, install the right packages, set it up everything, and then set up this na uh, nice little tool that basically does everything for you as far as compiling and installing goes. And after that is done, you have all of the code, you have all of the result of the code, which is the apps, and you can just change the code. Of course, that requires a some basic skills of code editing, coding, but also an idea. And if you need an idea on what to do, you can try to get involved in some like KD chats. There are Telegram chats and such. So you can see all the, all the people discussing their ideas and it should make that easier. Oh, by the way, another piece of my code that's on the Steam Deck and it's stupid, but I want to talk about this because I'm so happy I did this is if you actually open up anything and you zoom in, and you zoom in and you zoom in, you can see that there is a little shadow of around everything and you can see it easier, more easily on white wallpapers. And of course the panel and the applets have a shadow and the shadow was done by me. It was done actually two times because I just couldn't be happy about the result. And I've actually spent one month developing just the shadow, how the shadow should look. And I've actually done a 15 minutes video on my channel just talking about how I implemented the shadows. Because sure, it sounds easy, it's not. Otherwise I wouldn't have spent one month. But now the shadows are just right and I'm actually proud of my shadows. So by the way, you might notice that I'm showing you all of these on my machine and on videos on the Steam Deck and not on an actual Steam Deck. And you might also remember how I told you that uh, people working on KD Plasma are mostly volunteers and I'm one. So you might realize that one causes the other. And if you do want me to try these things out and actually have the money to buy a Steam Deck to see that my code is indeed on the Steam Deck, then you can try to give me some tips on my like Patreon, PayPal, LibrePay, whatever. And that really is a nice thing to do, I guess. That makes me happy, so it is. And that was everything, and I cannot wait to see what code of yours will be on the Steam Deck. So make sure to 
pop up kd.org and get involved. Bye.